All right, all right, all right. All right, so one thing. Let's uh, let's start talking about. I guess, I guess first I want to start talking about shielding, right? Because a lot of times I watch gameplay of uh, mid-level players. Mid-level players for the most part. Low-level players this shouldn't really apply to y'all, because or lower level players it shouldn't apply to because uh, they're still trying to figure out like the mechanics of the game for the most part. Um, but mid level players have like a decent grasp of the game but it gets kinda hard to improve at a certain point right like you you don't know what you should be looking for like you understand like oh I should be looking for habits or oh uh, I wanna hit these moves because they lead to our BNBs and stuff but you don't notice small things like, let's say for example, if you were playing against somebody and every time they did, um, let's say they whiffed a forward air, I hit the forward air, whoops. Let's say they uh, hit the whiffed a forward air, every time they did that, they jumped back, right? Like, that's a habit that most people wouldn't notice because it's it's so deep into someone's gameplay right or like let's say every time they whiffed um a move they dashed back right like that it looks safe but it's like it's like a habit at that point right so a lot of a lot of one big habit that a lot of mid-level players have with shielding is that they shield for literally no reason like they don't know how to move without shielding so they get to a point where like when they're dashing they just want to stop so they do dash shield right the problem is when you shield you can't you lock yourself into a choice of options right so you can spot dodge you can roll uh, you can jump and you can drop shield um, of course you have up the outer shield and you have up smash or whatever but uh, generally once you shield uh, you kind of you kind of have to choose something right and for some reason, I don't know what this is, but it seems like a lot of players believe in Ultimate that just dropping your shield is a bad thing. It probably has something to do with dropping a shield taking 11 frames and jumping taking 3. So a lot of people jump out of shield. And this is one of the big things that I've noticed. Like, people will be like over here and they just jump out of shield. Like, now if, if this wolf was mobile, like if they were moving... And you shielded if they move forward and they were like oh every time this person shields they jump out of shield then you would jump without even thinking about it because it's not something that's like you're aware of right it's just oh i should jump out of shield because it's the fastest thing i can do and then you get clipped and you're like dude i keep getting but then you like go to ask someone for help and you're like i keep getting clipped out of out of my jumps when i'm playing and i can't figure out why like it's like they know that i'm gonna jump what's well, like well when you shield, you jump out of shield because you think fast equals good, um, which is a totally another topic. Or, um, but um, there needs to be reasons behind when you shield. You know what I mean? Like, you, in in this game, there should be reasons behind everything you do. But um, people don't look at shield as an option. People don't look at shield as a tool. Like, there are ways that you can use shield. And a lot of people just use it as a way to stop movement. Um, so let's say, for example, Wolf is like here, right? I've seen so many people shield right here. And it's like, why? Now I get on Wi-Fi there's delay. So I, I, I can understand that you may be scared of trying to react to laser but you probably have more time than you think like wolf let me see if i can you probably have like half a second to react like if you're if your mind is thinking about laser then you shouldn't be panicking and shielding because a lot of times people panic shield um i forgot to change this back to american i was like wait or back to english yo what's good kuma what's good baby hmm out of pink eye for real I was looking mad white wait huh all right look how late into the laser I press shield like if you were thinking about 
a laser coming, you could be moving, or you could just press shield mad late. You don't have to preemptively shield because that locks you into you being stuck, right? So, um, you need to be able to measure your distances. And if you're right here and you're thinking that Wolf is gonna laser, well, okay, I could shield, but what else could I do? I could jump. If you jump over the laser, um, let me see if I can do it. I probably can't, but boom. Then you get a punish. That was a very sloppy punish, but you, you see what I mean? Like, there's no reason for you to shield in anticipation of a projectile or predicting a projectile when it's reactable. And I think a lot of people shield on prediction when shield is more of a reactionary tool. It comes out like frame one or two or something like that. Um, so it's like a few different ways you can use shield. I think you can use it defensively, but I also think you can use it offensively. Like, um, let's say uh, some people do dash shield like as an approach tool because they understand that, um, let's say like cr this crom you're doing, they were nearing right here a lot. And the better you get, the more, the more common this is. Like you nair in anticipation of where someone's gonna be, right? Or like you do this forward air in anticipation that the wolf is gonna move forward and you can you can catch their movement. So let's say you're doing that and then you realize that the wolf decides, oh, I'm going to uh, shoot a laser. Cause laser seems to be like, I don't know. I just keep using laser cause it's easy. Um, so instead of doing this nair, um, they shoot the laser and you, oh, that shield was bad. You sh they shoot the laser and you're here. From there, you can punish out a shield with like a jump forward air, right? So it's like an offensive way of using shield. Like using shield to pressure your opponent. Like it's defensive, but it's to change the situation from a, a neutral s situation to an advantageous uh, situation. Joe Biden is indeed our president, yes. Um, one other huge thing I see um it's a lot of people oh man it might be hard to get this to work a lot of people will shield here but they don't understand why they're shielding here right um they see like they're they see like top players do it and they're like i'm gonna shield here too but a lot of people don't ever cover the role so normally um what this covers is like neutral get up get up attack and it does really well at cover and jump right because you can jump out of you can jump with Nair, you can jump with up air, which, but you probably want to do Nair. Um, and it puts like, I think this is one of the few winning situations in the game, right? Like, unless you, like most good characters are really good at ledge trapping. So it's one of the few situations that are winning and you need to be able to identify like, okay, this person likes to uh, get up attack when I'm doing Nair, right? So it's a layer deeper. It's not just run up shield unless they have like a really, really bad habit or something like that. You know what I mean? But in that case, if the, if the habit is so bad that you know for certain that they aren't going to uh, do like a rising button or get up attack or anything like that then you don't even need to do run up shield. You can just skip that. But if you are if the person if the player's pretty good and they see like, "Oh, um I'm covering jump and neutral get up with this, right? But this loses to get up attack, then you can do this once and then shield, right? So, um that's a way of putting pressure on the opponent where they're like, "Oh, crap. Now I need to think about what happens if I do near then shield because they'll get punished for trying to hit you." So it's really important to like identify why you're shielding. Like, if you're just running around doing this, like, wh why? Like, a lot of times people will get grabbed a ton too on the ground. They're like, I can't figure out. Like, I keep getting grabbed, and I'm like, what? You're doing this? Like, this? Literally, grabbing was made to beat shielding. Like, you, you're doing the the one thing that grab was intended to beat. Like, you need to figure out like how to move around without um without using shield like and there are plenty of ways like i don't know how to wave my oh okay 
Uh, that might have been a B-reverse, but, like, you can do B-reverses, you can do wave bounces. Like, there's so many ways to, like, move in this game. That's what I really like about it is that it's not linear, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, like, um... There's set play, but the gameplay isn't set in, set in place. How do you read AR-11? Ha, 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 can't even read AR-10. Do I jab back from RAR? I do RAR. I don't, I can't, um... I never practice attack counseling. I haven't practiced a lot of stuff in this game, honestly. <clears throat> Ow! <laughs> but I think there are, are plenty... I, I think there are plenty of ways to use shield. Oh, there's also, um... Parrying, of course. I don't know how, how I, um... Forgot about that. Um, a common thing that you'll see amongst players that are very, very comfortable with their, um, but a common thing that you'll see against characters that are very comfortable with, like, their characters' matchups and, like, their combo trees and routes or whatever is they'll do, like, like, let's say I landed this up air. I don't want to use up air. It's not a good example because I can get follow-ups off of up air. Let's say I landed this up tilt, right? The up tilt's not good. Maybe up tilt at this percent. Maybe up tilt at like 30. Up tilt's usually negative on hit, right? So, a lot of times you won't really see people doing up tilt, but let's say you're in an anti-air situation and you decide to use up tilt. Um, and you know that your opponent likes to fast fall with an aerial after you hit them. A lot of people will flicker shield there. Um, because if Wolf did fast fall in air, then you got a parry punish. Um, and that's also one route that you can look at when you're playing. Like, uh, if you played like Fox or something. Like, I know ZD does this. He'll do like um, up tilts, especially against Wolf. Because uh, we have so many in our region. He'll do like up tilts against Wolf. So do like three or four, I think it's four. And then he'll uh, flicker his shield just in case. Like he doesn't, he doesn't gain or lose. He doesn't gain anything if it doesn't, if the parry near doesn't happen. Uh, Cause if they decide to air dodge and he flickered shield, then he can continue up tilting. So, and if they like directional air dodge, then he would just dash attack. Cause he, he's, the routes are so ingrained in his head that it's just, okay, flicker shield leads to this because most people aren't going to jump in that scenario because when you're playing smash one of the biggest things unless your character has multiple jumps um one of the worst things you can do is lose your jump especially against a character like fox that's really good at uh vertical juggling so learning times where you can go hey i know that this combo route or whatever is like really good and you could you could extend that very far you also could know all right let's take it's, it's, if you want to take the guaranteed damage or if you want to go let's take the greedy damage and go for like this up air wait for well a lower percent go for like this up air and then go for like a parry like a parry punish but you would have to lab your parry punishes after that but knowing that's another use of like another way to use shield or like if you know um like I do this against uh, Peach a lot because I just know that Peach's um, and other characters, but Peach specifically, their buttons are so safe on shield, uh, and it's a lot of pressure, and it can be kind of scary. Also, try to do this against Ken and Ryu, but it's a lot harder. Um, if they're pressuring your shield, like they're just boom, 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 and you're like ah, ah, I'm panicking, but you don't want to roll. Um, you can always learn the timings to drop shield reshield and then go okay like they're just gonna keep pressuring my shield because they they're looking for something like they let's say you know or you feel like they're looking for a jump or they're looking for a roll um after you do it the first time just try to time a parry punish like or if you can't punish the move when you parry it like peach back air or something like that then just do it and then get out of the situation but there's so many ways, like, that you can use shield. Like, a lot of people shield on the platform, which is good. But I, I don't even know how to shield drop. Can you shield drop in this game? I never even, like, thought about trying it. Um, 
but if you notice that people's platform pressure isn't that good, like if this wolf were to jump like up here, oh, I don't have, what's it called on? Whoops. Oop. If this wolf was to do this, that's punishable because it wasn't, whoops, it wasn't this. It was, ah! Oh, it's so hard to do. It, it was that. And like, there's slight differences, but one was safe and one wasn't. Because it was still rising, it still needed time time to fall after the forward air. But the second one, um, Wolf was falling, so the, the forward air was safer. So if you notice that like their uh, platform pressure isn't that good, um, you can get free punishes off of that and stuff like that. So uh, it's really important to identify like when you should be shielding instead of shielding like just because you feel like shielding. Because as I said before, like, you should have a reason for doing everything in this game. 